Good morning, my dear friends. We are gathered here on this first Monday of the fifth week of Easter to celebrate Holy Mass. In today's Mass, we continue to pray for each other. And so I will offer this Mass for you and pray for your families and pray for all those you hold dear in your heart every day. We continue also in this Mass to pray for those who have asked our prayers. We pray for those who need our prayers and may not have asked. Pray for those who are battling all forms of disease at this time, that the grace and healing mercies of God may be with them. We also pray for our medical staff, doctors, nurses, researchers, those who provide our equipment and prepare those equipment and supply chains. We pray for all those who are in some way involved in fighting this virus. We pray that God may bless their efforts with success. We pray for those who are sick, pray especially for those in critical care, asking for God's miraculous healing. And we ask for those who have died, that God may rest them. Pray too for all mothers who we celebrate, whom we celebrated yesterday, especially for those mothers who could not be visited, that they may know how much they are loved and appreciated. That like God may give us another opportunity to celebrate those moments with them. I'll also invite you to bring your own intentions to God at this time as we worship our good God. For our entrance hymn today, we will sing the song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. My dear friends, we bring your intentions, and the intentions we have offered this morning to God, we pray for those who have special days, birthdays, anniversaries, or other special events today. We offer these prayers for you too, and ask that God may bless your special event or special day. To prepare ourselves for this Mass, let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. We were sent to hear the contract of God, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. May your right hand, O Lord, we pray, encompass your family with perpetual hope, so that de defended by your defended from all wickedness by the resurrection of your only begotten Son, we may make our way by means of your heavenly gifts. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. My dear friends, our first reading is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles, the 14th chapter, verse 5 to 18. There was an attempt in Iconium by both the Gentiles and the Jews, together with their leaders, 
to attack and stone Paul and Barnabas. They realized it and fled to Lyconian, cities of Lystra and Derby, and to the surrounding countryside where they continued to proclaim the good news. At Lystra, they, there was a crippled man, lamed from birth, who had never walked. He listened to Paul speaking, who looked intently at him, saw that he had faith to be healed, and called out in a loud voice, Stand up straight on your feet. He jumped up and began to walk about. When the crowd saw what Paul had done, they cried out in Lyconian, The gods have come down to us in human form. They called Barnabas, Zeus, and Paul, Hermes, because he was a chief speaker. The priest of Zeus, whose temple was at the entrance of the city, brought oxen and gallons to the gates, for he, together with the people, intended to offer sacrifices. The apostles Barnabas and Paul tore their garments when they heard this and rushed out into the crowd shouting, Men, what are, why are you doing this? We are of the same nature as you, human beings. We proclaim to you good news that you should turn from your idols to the living God who made heaven and earth and sea and all that is in them. In past generations he allowed all Gentiles to go their own ways, yet in bestowing his goodness he did not leave himself without witness, for he gave you rains from heaven and fruitful seasons and filled you with nourishment and gladness for your hearts. Even with these words they scarcely restrained the crowds from offering sacrifice to them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalm is not to us, O Lord, but to your name give the glory. Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name give the glory because of your mercy, because of your truth. Why should the pagans say, where is their God? Not to us, O Lord, but to your name give the glory. Our God is in heaven. Whatever he wills, he does. Their idols are silver and gold, the handiwork of men. Not to us, O Lord, but to your name give the glory. May you be blessed by the Lord who made heaven on earth. Not to us, O Lord, but to your name give the glory. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Holy Spirit will teach you everything and remind you of all I told you. Alleluia, Alleluia. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. The reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. Whoever loves me will be loved by my Father and I will love him and reveal myself to him. Judas, not the Iscariot, said to him, Master, then what happened that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered and said to him, Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, yet the word you hear is not mine, but that of the Father who sent me. I have told you this while I am with you. 
the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. He will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, I hope that today um, would be a better day for you. I hope that today will be a more hopeful, a more promising day for you. I hope that wherever you are and whatever you are doing, that God may grant results and grant um, his blessings and grant whatever it is that you are expecting and I hope that every new day will bring you something to hope something to hold on to something that will inspire and encourage you today I'd like to reflect with you from the gospel reading and this this morning I don't know how many of you know that um, my, my hospital ward is where we, we take care of our COVID patients. And so this morning at 6.30, we had a ceremony to bless our staff because we lost one of them. And so um, it was a very difficult experience to, you don't wanna lose your staff. And so we lost one of them and that was very, that was very hard to know that um, this is real. There are people who care for us and care for our sick are always in danger too. And so um, after we had blessed them and blessed their hands for healing, that God may help them as they care for our patients, we, we had time to talk with other staff. And the one question I asked that got me thinking I asked some of them, what is it about your work right now that frustrates you more than anything else? What is it about what you do now as a medical staff, nurse, doctor, that frustrates you, that makes you really, really mad? I was waiting for a typical answer, maybe with your work schedule or the risks, maybe with whatever it is that causes them pain, you know, in the words or the constant fear that they have to bring, they may bring this back to their families. That, that's not what I heard. What I heard was one thing, if there's one thing that frustrates me, and that's what I heard from them, is when I see people who are not taking this thing seriously and they make our work more difficult for us because the more of them that get sick, the more they put pressure on, on every already stretched workforce. And that is the worst thing that we want to see. People who don't wear their masks, people who don't keep safe distances, people who put themselves, intentionally put themselves at risk and then end up here and endanger every one of us. Says that is the one thing, if there's one thing that frustrates me, that's what frustrates me. I, I was very, I was very sad to hear that these doctors and nurses are not worried any day, any day about the patients that they care for and everything that they do. That was um, very instructive for me. I was rather surprised that they are concerned about how you and I behave out here and how our behavior here puts everyone at risk who is trying, doing their best every day risking every day to take care of us and so it is in the light of what happened this morning that i would like to reflect in this gospel the lord jesus is speaking about love he says whoever has whoever keeps my commandments or whoever loves me will keep my commandments whoever loves me will keep my commandments and whoever loves me will be loved by my father and 
I too will love him or love her and will reveal myself to him. Whoever loves me will keep my commandments. Now, I, I believe we take it for granted, every one of us who is newly baptized or who has some faith or who has had an experience of God in their lives, believe that we love God and we love Jesus. And maybe you're not Christian. You love God in your own way. We believe that. We take that for granted because we repeat it ourselves every day. Now, the fact that God loves us because I say that to you every day. Now, it is about 9, 16 a.m. Eastern. I want to say to you that you are still, at this time, the delight of God. That can be taken for granted because God loves you no matter what. But when someone loves you, they expect to be loved back. Love is not a one-way traffic. Love is something that we reciprocate. So if I love you, the way to sustain that love is that you love me back. That way you bring out more love from me. And then that way I bring out more love from you. So, so that's how love works. It doesn't work one way. Only God can love one way because he doesn't depend on you loving him. But he desires he is happy to see that we love him back. Just like parents who love their children, in most cases, they don't care if their children love them back. They will keep loving them no matter what. But they will appreciate if you love them back. And so the Lord says, whoever loves me will keep my commandments. Now, love is a verb. And a verb is an action. It's something we do. It's not something we say. It's something we do. It's not just something we just um, speak out. Love is visible. It can be seen. It can be seen in how we treat the person with love. In how we take seriously the person we love. In how we protect the person we love. In how we do things for the person we love. So, so love is something that we can feel and see and touch and hear. It's something that all senses, all our senses, we can even smell it. All our senses can feel love, can see love, can know love. And so when the Lord says, if you love me, you will keep my words. You will keep my commandments. Now, uh, most of us, except maybe for those who lived in the era of Christ, no one really saw him physically to love. No one really met him to take care of him. And that's why the Lord said, if you love me, you will take care of my brother or my sister. So, so love for the Lord is visible for you and I in how we take care of those his brothers and sisters. Of how we take care of each other. Of how I take care of you. Of how you take care of me. Of how I treat you. Of how you treat me. Of how you protect me. Of how I protect you. Of how I protect the world for you. And for myself and for everyone else. That's how we demonstrate love. At a time like this where everyone is was so selfish. Only self caring about themselves. We as believers who have been touched by the love of God. Are called to a new evangelism. To a new evangelism. An evangelism that is, test, that is, that is witnessed by love. By how we treat and how we behave. And how we protect others. And so, taking from what the Lord said here, and what happened this morning with my staff, I, I want to say this to every one of you who is listening. Part of loving Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. That means you will protect me. You will do what is in my good, what is in my advantage. What is, what is something that makes me safe, keep me, keeps me safe? So I want to say this to you, if you're listening to me. The one way you want to witness to the love that you have for Christ is that you do what is right, not just for you, not what is selfish, what is self for self, but you do what is right. At this time, you want to protect the fragile child who is Christ? A child who doesn't have the health that you have.
who was born with some medical condition, who may be at risk if you don't protect them. That's a way to protect. That's a way to love Jesus right now. That means if you're going public, you want to you want to wear your mask. It's not for you. You're okay, but you wear it for me, for that child, and for everyone else. That's what. That's how. That's the best way to protect. Now we're opening up a lot of places right now. And I'm sure this nurse that I spoke with and this other doctor that I spoke with this morning who told me the one thing that frustrates them is how you and I behave outside here. That means when you go out in public, whether no matter where that is, without a mask, you are giving the chance that someone might get sick because of you. And that someone will end up with them. And that's the one thing they hate the most because we seem not to care about them. We clap for them and yet we don't live as though we care about them. And that frustrates them. And I want to say this to you. I believe in God's name. Because I know you are a good person. And I know you care about people. And I know you care about God. But if you do, take care of yourself. Protect yourself. But protect others more importantly. Because that is a way that you and I can demonstrate that we love God. And that we keep his word. That we care for him. That we will protect him no matter what. That's the one way to do it. Wear your mask. Keep safe distance. Wash your hands. Don't get infected. You might survive it. Someone else who was born with worse conditions than you may not might end up somewhere taking more resources from people that are already stretched. I beg you in God's name. Take care of the world that God is putting in your hands. Take care of others who may not be able to take care of them. That is the way that we can love Jesus and demonstrate that we love him and that we are witnesses to that love right now, right here in the world in very practical terms. Not just saying it, living it every day. So I encourage you, if that's a list, if that's the one thing, you can inconvenience yourself. I hear people tell me, it's uncomfortable. Wow. I'm sure if Jesus told you, if he called you and said, wear that for me, I'm sure you will wear it. He's telling you, wear it for me. And I hope you do. Keep safe distance for me, and I hope you do. Do whatever you need to do to stay safe and keep others safe. I hope you will do. And I believe you will. If Jesus sent you an email and told you that, you will do it. And he is saying that to you right now, through those nurses and those doctors and all those who are right now in the hands of Jesus, bringing healing to our sick. And I pray that God may bless you as we demonstrate this love for one another. And we demonstrate care and concern for one another. We lost our star. I'm sure she may still be alive if someone had done something right. May that God may give um, protection to all those who work for health care. And that God may protect you. Now, when all of this is over, you and I will still be here, blessing and worshiping God together. As always, I like to end what I everything I do by reminding you that you are the delight of the Almighty God, that God loves you very much. Let us pray. Most gracious God, we just want to thank you for everything that you do. Every day you wake us up. Every day you open our ears to hear you. Every day you bring us fresh inspiration. You bring us new imagination on how to handle and manage this crisis. Today you hinted that you will send us the advocate, the Holy Spirit, from the Father, who will teach us how to handle everything, how to manage ourselves and manage our world, how to remember everything that you taught us. We ask, oh God, that you help us open ourselves to his presence and to his coming, that we could embrace and allow him rest in us and dwell in us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for your church. We pray for our priests. Pray especially for those who have died at this time. And we ask that the same Holy Spirit may touch the minds and hearts of young men and women to answer the call to the priest with the religious life and the diaconate. And that this church may be strengthened by new members. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our medical staff. Pray especially for those who are so frustrated and upset that we are not doing enough to protect them. We beg you, dear God, that your grace may be with them to focus every day 
on the care they bring for the sick, but also to care for their own protection and that of their families. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died. We pray and ask, dear God, that you may grant them rest and mercy and peace. Pray especially for mothers who died and didn't have the chance to celebrate Mother's Day with their families because of this virus. Dear God, may they know rest in your presence. May you bring comfort and healing to every member of their families. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have asked our prayers. Pray and ask that you, God, may take those concerns and those intercessions and petitions and please bring them to your altar in heaven. And from there that the rains of blessing may shower on all of your children. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And finally, dear God, we ask that all those who are sick, so sick, critically sick right now, may feel the power of your spirit bringing soothing and healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We end by asking our blessed mother to pray with us and for us as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Blessed the Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made and become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed the Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruits of the vine and work of human hands to become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our mighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, that so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always at all times to acclaim you, Lord. But in this time above all to Lord yet more gloriously. When Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and pleads our cause before you. He is a sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who now lives forever. Therefore, overcome with Pascal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly host with the, and even the, the, the heavenly powers with the angelic host Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they are playing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift we pray. By sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread. Giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, 
take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, once more giving thanks. He gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. With the second acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Timothy our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember all those who have died from this virus, O God, and all those who have died during this period, especially our mothers and our grandmothers. Grant that they who are united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life. We may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us rise and pray in the words our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always and with your spirit. Dear friends, from me to you, may the peace of God, may the kindness and mercy of God be with you, rest with you, and abide with you now and always. Amen. Lamb of God, you will take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you will take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you will take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers. Look up and behold the Lamb of God. 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Let only say the word and my soul shall be. Let us take a moment and say our devotion and our dedication and invite the Lord spiritually to our home and to our lives. Dear Lord, your children around the world are still waiting for the day when we can all gather again as family on that one table and celebrate physically. But until that day, O God, we ask that you and your angels may bring this sacrament to them in their homes and in their places of safety. And that you may nourish their souls and their spirits and their lives. That you may remodel and refashion us to listen more intently to you. To protect you as we protect each other and protect the world you have given us. For, we are, for this all we ask in your holy name. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host. By the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the other evil spirits that wander around, seeking the winds of souls. We ask this. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear friends, um, before the final blessing, I want to say thanks to all of you for joining us at this Mass and for praying with us. And I continue to pray for you, and I hope you pray for me and pray for all those who who are putting their lives at risk at this time, our doctors and our nurses, and all those who are on the front lines of this battle. Please. Protect them. They need you to do their work well. Protect them. I beg you in God's name. Do it for them. Do it for Jesus that you love. And I know you do love Jesus. Do it for Jesus that you love. So always I'd like to end my reflections by reminding you that you are the delight of the mighty God. And that God loves you very much. The Lord be with you. And Almighty God bless and keep you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. For our closing hymn, we will sing whatsoever you do. Whatsoever you do to the least of my people that you do unto me when i was hungry you gave me to eat when i was thirsty you gave me to drink now then saw into the home of my father 
so for you do to the least of my people that you do unto me.